The national best-selling author Lisa Wingate makes her home in Central Texas, and there are things in her books that many of the rest of us who live here may find very familiar. Her latest book released this month is Firefly Island. It's the third book in her Moses Lake series. Lisa, again, glad to have you with us. Moses Lake will seem very familiar to a lot of people, especially in this viewing area. So can you tell us what community is it based on? You've said it's based on a Central Texas community. It is based on a Central Texas community, and I can tell you which one. I mean, it's based on Lake Whitney. What was it about Lake Whitney that you decided to build a whole series of books around? Well, first of all, it's beautiful. It's just a beautiful lake. It's a beautiful place to go. It's close to home. It's easier to write somewhere that you really know intimately because you know how the seasons look and how things smell and feel and what the people are like and uh, what the mornings look like and you know, what it's like after dark and how the stars are. You know all those little things about it, so it makes it easier to write about. Um, other than that, I, I love the kind of the community around the lake and how it's a very varied community. You've got everything from pockets of, of extreme poverty basically to beautiful lake homes and so a lot of interesting people come together and then there's all the mysteries about what's buried under the <laughs> lake you know school buses and cars and towns and what might be under there and so it's just a great setting and it was a controversy in central texas that kind of sparked your inspiration for this book tell me about the the controversy that was the real life controversy well, that was actually one of the pieces of serendipity. In every book, there's fiction, fact, and serendipity. And that was a serendipity because I went to the premiere of True Grit at our little uh, hometown theater. And it was kind of a big deal. There was one seat left in the house. And, and so I ended up next to the mayor. And the mayor was telling me some things about this big sort of scandalous political controversy or politically motivated thing that was happening. And I guess I won't say exactly what it is because I don't want to spoil it for people. But, uh, but at the time, I needed a big crisis for the book. And so as he started talking about it, I thought, oh, that's it. That's the thing. So, and that <laughs> happens right a lot. Away. Oh, I knew. I knew. That happens a lot. When I'm sort of searching for something, it'll just come out of thin air. There was a real life moment from your own life that you saved for many years. Your husband got a phone call that moved you to Texas, a job offer that moved you to a ranch in Texas, very similar to this character in your <laughs> book. You, you've been sitting on that nugget for many years. Why did you decide to use that moment from your real life in this book? I think some of it may have to do with the fact that my boys are growing up and almost gone and we're about to that empty nest phase. You start to reflect back on things. And that was, at that time we had a three and a half year old, didn't have the second one yet. And it was, it was a big life change. Um, my first reaction when he came out of the back bedroom after the phone call and said, I've been out for a job on this 10,000 acre ranch in Texas, my first reaction was no, 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 no. My mother will kill us because we were close to my parents and whatnot and thought if we take that grandbaby away, we won't survive mm. to the end of the driveway. But we did, and uh, we just thought it would be a big adventure, and so we did it. And it was a big adventure. And I always knew I'd write about it, I just hadn't done it yet, and so it just came up. Also in this book, you use your real life knowledge of ranching to write very realistically about that. You say that a lot of times writers don't always know realistically how to write about ranching. But another thing you write about is being a stepmother, which you don't have experience in. Why did you want this character to be a stepmother? Well, I sort of wanted this character to be at a real transition point in life. But a lot of my, so maybe at the beginning of a marriage, basically. But a lot of my experiences on the ranch that meant so much had to do with having a three and a half year old boy discovering everything there is to love about living on a ranch if you're a three and a half year old boy. And so I sort of was looking for a way to work that into the story. And the great thing about fiction is you, you can mold it into what you need it to be. Because I really wanted Mallory, the character in the story, to have the experiences that go with, with being the mom of a little boy. You know, boys are earthy and they live close to the ground. They notice all the little teeny flowers and things that you don't see yourself. And so that was really how the, how the step parenting thing came into the story. Interesting. All right, Lisa, we got to go. But I sure do appreciate you being here and talking with us about your latest release, Firefly Island. Thanks so much. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.